Good morning, friends. It is Friday. We made it to the end of the week, Friday, October 29th. I'm Dana Corsello, the Vicar of the Cathedral, and so happy to be with you this day. I'm going to start with these opening sentences. In the fullness of our humanity, heal us, gracious Savior. In the fullness of our humanity, heal us, gracious Savior. Let us pray. Troubled God, in every generation you call your people to contend against the brutality of sin and betrayal. Keep us steadfast, even in our fear and uncertainty, so that we may follow where Jesus has led the way. Amen. So, my friends, on this day, I'm going to read you a very familiar parable, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And I hope, through an illustration that I want to share with you, you might hear in it something new and something quite relevant to our times. So this is from Luke chapter 10, beginning at the 25th verse. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed over to the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed over to the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, wounds having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. So I want to share part of a homily written by uh, a pastor named Hill Carmichael. He shared this, and so much of it really touched me. This is from Hill Carmichael. I believe he's an ELCA pastor, if I'm not mistaken. And the whole point of it was how fear influences the decisions we make fear. So Hill said that this is actually a story not about being nice, but about how the world can be transformed, the transformation of the world. Jesus is responding to a question by sharing that there are three types of people along the road between Jerusalem and Jericho, which was very dangerous. So the first type, he said, are the robbers, the robbers, whose ethic suggests that what is yours is mine at whatever cost. And the robbers will take what they need through violence, coercion, whatever means necessary. These are the people who will leave us physically, mentally, and emotionally beaten and bruised along life's road with nothing left but our shallow breath, robbers. Now, the second type of person to walk along the dangerous road between Jerusalem and Jericho is represented by the priest and the Levite, whose ethic suggests that what is mine is mine, and I must protect it even if it means you get hurt in the process. What is mine is mine. They aren't bad people. Both the priest and the Levite are deeply respected in their communities. They very likely follow all the societal rules and norms they sit on local boards. They pay their taxes. They likely coach their daughter or soccer's teams. They also show 
a great deal of love to those within their immediate communities, but because of what crossing the road to help might cost them, they put their head down and go about their business. So even without recognizing it, they do more harm than good. Their focus is inward towards their needs and the needs of those who are most like them. It's an ethic that leads the good and decent priest and Levite toward a life of valuing their reputations instead of relationships. And it often results with them choosing their own individual rights over the health and well-being of their neighbors. And if we're all being honest, I'd say it's the category that most of us fall into more than we care to admit. Okay, stay with me. And then there's the Samaritan, whose ethic is one of love. And along one of the most dangerous roads in all of history, this person lives by a code that says, what is mine is yours if you have need of it. What is mine is yours if you have need of it. My safety is yours if you have need of it. My security is yours if you have need of it. My resources are yours if you have need of them. My health is tied to your health. My well-being is tied to your well-being. I think you can see some associations here, my friends. And he went on to quote Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who preached on this text once. And he said the real difference between the priest and the Levite from the Samaritan is the question that each of them must have asked. The priest and the Levite likely asked, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? The Samaritan likely asked a very different question. If I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? <sighs> right? Total conviction here. So he goes on to make the point that fear makes us behave badly or selfishly. Um, all of this is true for us today. When fear is the ethic of our lives, we tend to cling to our own safety and our own individual rights. When fear is the ethic of our lives, we retreat, mind our own business, and rarely cross to the other side of the road to help. And when fear is the ethic of our lives, we end up placing our hope in mottos like, we dare defend our rights or don't tread on me, as opposed to the greatest commandment to love God and to love one's neighbor. Now, I don't have to explicitly lay this out for you. I think you know where I'm going. Um, and we're all on that road right now. Right now, we're somewhere in between and it's dangerous. The, out, the heartbreak and exhaustion is real. It's not just the pandemic and the virus, it's everything. It's layers and layers of being beaten and bruised along a dry, a dry hard road these past 18 months. And then politically, for God's sake, what's going on right now too. It's just, it's all about an ethic of fear and selfishness. So my friends, I hope that I've given you something to think about I know that I'm certainly convicted by this scripture. Let us, may we all cross the road to be willing to help our neighbor when we cross to the other side. I think we'll get a glimpse of what Jesus is talking about and we'll actually see what transformation looks like, most importantly, in ourselves, in ourselves. And this is truly the kingdom of God. All right. I'm going to go now, lead you into a confession. It begins. We are human. We strive to love, but often we fail. Jesus, we confess that we do not always answer when you call us to bear your light in the world. Although we long for love, too often we fail to accept it or to offer it. Help us let go of our failings, renew our hearts, Fill us anew with your love. Amen. And God says to us, I love you for your own sake. Know that you are loved and forgiven. Jesus invites us to pick up our lives anew and walk in love. And now, my friends, let us pray. God of extravagant love, 
Transform us with the freedom of forgiveness. God of unbounded sacrificial love, teach us to give ourselves in joyful service. God, whose love persists even in the darkest hour, deepen our faith, renew our spirits, and strengthen our confidence in you so we don't walk in fear anymore, that we may truly learn to walk in this self-giving love. And now I invite your own, your own intercessions. What is it that you need this day or someone in your family? Now will you join me, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And finally, our last prayer this morning, Christ, our victim, whose beauty was disfigured upon the cross, open wide your arms to embrace our tortured world that we may not turn our eyes, but abandon ourselves to your mercy. Amen. And finally, friends, in the fullness of our humanity, heal us, gracious Savior, and may you this day not walk in fear, but in love to the glorious name of our God. Amen. <laughs>